Well, a new climate report says temperatures in Europe have been rising by more than twice the global average. The World Meteorological Organization says this means alpine glaciers are receding and Greenland's ice sheet is melting, contributing to rising sea levels. Its report says communities will continue to be hit by exceptional heat, wildfires and floods. Azadeh Mashiri has more. This year's extreme weather was a reminder that global warming is happening and it's accelerating. That's something scientists keep warning us. But now a new report by the United Nations says one region is warming faster than others, Europe. So we often and rightly hear in conversation or communication about climate change, about the 1.5 degree global temperature limit as set out in the Paris Agreement. But we must not forget that Europe actually warms faster than this, faster than this global average. Europe has warmed at more than twice the global average over the past three decades. Its average temperatures have risen by 0.5 degrees Celsius per decade, and the consequences have been severe. Last year, half a million people were directly affected and hundreds were killed. It caused more than $50 billion in economic damage. There are a number of reasons why Europe's cities have now been dubbed heat islands. Land warms faster than the sea, and Europe has lots of it. Another is that the highest regions of the globe are quickly heating up. So the UN said even though Europe is making good headway in cutting emissions, it needs to do more to stop its rivers from drying up and to prevent floods that swallow up entire roads. Even if we get it down to zero emissions and we can limit it to two, we're looking at conditions that are going to be a lot more extreme and we're going to have to live with that. So building resilience into our communities, all those hard lessons we're learning through COVID and all the other terrible changes we're seeing, that's going to become the new norms. The UN's climate conference COP27 is only days away. This report is a reminder of why scientists call climate change a crisis. Azadeh Mashiri, BBC News. Let's talk to Professor David Caroli, a climate scientist at the University of Melbourne, who also serves on the Climate Council, a climate change communications organisation in Australia. Professor Caroli, thank you for talking to us. I wonder how much, if any of this, is, is surprising to you? Look, it's not really surprising at all because it's more a continuation of the trends that we've seen over the last 20, 30 years. And it's very much the case that ongoing global warming will continue for well into the future unless we very rapidly reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So I gather that uh, Europe's rate of warm warming is, is similar to that of Australia, where you are. Why do we see this, uh, this variation, Europe warming by more than twice the global average? Look, the reason, part of the reason we see that is because land warms up faster than the oceans. And so the global average temperature is the average of the land and the oceans combined. Oceans warm up much more slowly than land temperatures. And typically the global land average temperature increases about 50% higher than the global average temperature. So when we talk of, for instance, limiting global warming, the land and the ocean average warming to two degrees Celsius, the land would be expected to warm up at about three degrees when the global average is only warm two degrees. And Europe at double the rate of global warming would be even significantly warmer than that again. And much the same in Australia. Australia has been experiencing much faster rate of warming than the global average. Again, Australia is a large continental landmass. The inland areas are heating up much more rapidly than the coastal regions. And the same is true in much of Europe. The inland regions are experiencing much faster rates of warming, double and more than double across the whole of Europe. Yeah, and we heard a flavour of, of it in that report we just watched. But what, what will Europe adapting to climate change look like? That's a really tricky question because there are many different things that 
you know, climate change is going to lead to uh, rapid increases in heat waves on land, and that will have many impacts on ecosystems, on cities, on people, on human health, as well as leading to increases in bushfires. And adaptation to that means many different things in different regions. We're also seeing substantial increases in the magnitude and intensity of extreme short-term rainfall. One hour and one day rainfall extremes are increasing rapidly as well, and that's leading to increases in flooding in Europe, and that's been experienced. Both the extreme temperatures and flooding have been experienced in different parts of Europe in this most recent summer. And in fact, the analysis that the World Meteorological Organization released is only up to the end of 2021 and doesn't really include the increases and the, the extreme events that have been experienced in 2022 across many parts of Europe. Just time to ask you briefly, uh, the COP27 climate summit's almost upon us in Egypt. I wonder what you're expecting from that. Do you get a sense of urgency among those attending, particularly given all the challenges the globe's facing right now, aside from climate change? Yeah, look, the... COP27 meeting will start next week uh, in Egypt. There are many important matters. It's clear that the commitments from all countries around the world are not yet sufficient in terms of emission reductions to limit global warming to well below two degrees of Celsius or to even approach the limits that are required for one limiting warming to one and a half degrees. So much stronger action is needed to limit global warming. And that action is needed not just in Europe, but across all countries. Australia has increased its commitments for emission reductions when the new government was elected earlier this year. But even in Australia, the commitments are not strong enough to be Australia's fair share of limiting global warming to well below two degrees. And all countries need to enhance their emission reduction activities. And they also need to enhance their commitments to international finance support for developing countries, and right. particularly to support climate change adaptation, because we know that these increases in extreme events are going to occur across all countries and particularly impact developing countries. David Caroli, Professor David Caroli from the University of Melbourne, thank you very much.